If your new doctor seems to be about nine years old, or you've started to notice that people call you sir or ma'am, you might think that middle age sucks. That's why I'm here. We can get through this together. Hold on, just a sec. Let me get my reading glasses so we can look at the lighter side of midlife on 50 Sucks. The day after my 40th birthday, my eyes went south. I'm serious. I had never worn glasses. I had such perfect vision, I could read a street sign from three blocks away. My family called me Eagle Eyes. I was such a non-glasses wearer, in fact, that I actually had a pair of vanity glasses. You know, a great set of frames with clear lenses, so I could look cool and smart when I went to poetry readings. Okay, I never really went to poetry readings, but I wore them to Pizza Hut. What? Sometimes you need to look smart when you go to Pizza Hut. Linda wanted to look smart, too. She started wearing glasses when she was 12 years old. Sort of. I lied to my parents because I wanted glasses. And um, there was a, another little girl in my class that looked really smart with glasses, so I lied and said I needed glasses, and uh, so they got me glasses. I guess I must have lied when I went to the optometrist because I remember looking through them, and it wasn't easy, but I stuck it out because I wanted to look really smart, and uh, consequently, it, uh, it, it hurt my eyes. And so then I had to continue wearing glasses, but I really did need them. She's 68 years old now, and she still doesn't need readers. I only need glasses for seeing long-distance stuff or for TV. Uh, but I don't need glasses for... Sorry about my dogs, but they live here. Um, <laughs> they don't wear glasses. Uh, yeah. They take my glasses sometime if I leave them on the bedside table. But anyway, um, no, I don't need them for reading, so I'm very lucky with that. I celebrated my 40th birthday on March 3rd, which is always when I celebrate my birthday anyway. And then on March 4th, suddenly I couldn't read anything at work. Now, I know this is probably not what really happened, but I do know I was really worrying about turning 40 and I had been giving a lot of thought to how old I was going to be, so I was hyper aware of any little thing that might point to my imminent demise. These body changes happen gradually over time, I'm told, and you don't really think about them until it's too late. So on March 4th, it was too late. You know that stale old joke, I don't need glasses, I just need longer arms. I suddenly thought that was really funny. I realized that whenever I went to read something, my arm was stretching further and further out. I looked like a trombone player. So I went to the eye doctor, and sure enough, I needed reading glasses. Okay, that was fine. Lots of people use readers, right? This is Dave. He wears reading glasses. I asked him how old he was when he started using them. I was approaching 50. Okay, and can you read anything without your glasses? as long as it's in big print or if it's like far away. So distance wise, I'm very good. It's just that I can't see in, in front of my face. A couple of years later, old Eagle Eyes here had to go back for an eye exam because I was noticing that street signs were looking a little fuzzy. Now I had glasses for distance, for driving. So I had two pairs of eyeglasses, one for reading and one for driving. Okay, I can deal with that. Until one day, a meeting at work, there's a PowerPoint presentation and handouts. I'm seated about three quarters of the way back in the room. I'm having trouble seeing the screen. So I put on my distance glasses, great. But then I look down to see the handout and I can't read it. So I put on my reading glasses, but then I need to look up again. I, I think you get the picture. I was starting to get dizzy. Then I figured out a brilliant solution. I put both pairs of glasses on. The distance glasses on top, the readers on the bottom. The frames kind of overlapped on my nose. And I was golden. When I think back on it, I have to wonder that I was so concerned about seeing that I was not even thinking about what I might look like. <laughs> no, I was cruising now. I could look up and see the screen and the presenter. I could look down at my notes. Perfect. And then I shudder to remember this part. A colleague who was trying to be helpful said those words that people in their 40s have nightmares about. 
bifocals. Bifocals? You mean those really ugly, horn-rimmed, murky brown glass frames with thick Mr. Magoo lenses and a horizontal line right through the middle? The line of shame. The line that announces, that's it. It's over for her. Better settle your affairs because bifocals mean you are officially old and close to death. Bifocals? Quite frankly, I considered for some time that my two glasses solution, the distance pair on top and the readers on the bottom at the same time on my small nose, might actually be more attractive than bifocals. But the inconvenience of carrying two pair of glasses around and the occasional stare from strangers, not to mention the couple of times when I put the two pair of glasses on upside down, the readers on the top and the distance on the bottom, other than the blurry headache I was getting, I would have to stand on my head to read a book. I think I was around 48 or 49 when I finally had to surrender to progressive lenses. Notice I didn't say bifocals. Yeah, there is a bit of a happy ending to this story. I didn't have to have a line of shame across my lenses. There was this new thing called progressive lenses. No line, gradual prescription gradient, distance at the top, gradually changing down the lens to my reading prescription. So instead of having just two or three lenses like bifocals or even trifocals, progressive lenses are truly multifocal. They provide this seamless progression of many lens powers for all viewing distances. So I chose the coolest pair of frames I could find and ordered my new glasses. No more two pair of glasses sitting on my nose. Saved from the bifocal line. No one would even know that I had progressives on. My friend Jillian is 52, and she wears progressive lenses. She said when she was around 45 or 46, she noticed that she was having to take her glasses on and off a lot, and that's when she started considering progressives. So I asked her if she remembers when she first got her progressives. Yes, and the headaches and the need to throw up every so often, yeah, that was a joyful time. Yeah, and how did you get used to them? It only took me about a week. I only fell off the curb twice. Got a pretty bad sprained ankle, and when I went to emerge, they said, how did this happen? And I said, I got new glasses, and that gave them all a little giggle for the day. The optometrist called me when my glasses were ready, and honestly, I was excited to get them. I'd finally look cool and be able to see. The optician made sure they fit me, let me read this little card to make sure the prescription was right, gave me a cute little case, a miniature bottle of lens cleaner, and a cleaning cloth. Excuse me? How much? I don't remember the exact amount, but I know it was close to $1,000. Are you serious? I could have gotten a new set of eyes for that. That dampened the situation a little bit, but I was still excited about my new specs. When I think back, I do believe the sales lady said something about not wearing the new glasses until I got home, and that it would take a bit of time to get used to the new prescription and to progressive lenses, but... I was too excited about my new big girl spectacles. They looked great, by the way, and no one would ever know that I was middle-aged and wearing progressive lenses. The first sign that something was wrong was the minute I left the eyeglass shop. As I stepped off the curb into the parking lot, the ground became liquid. I reached out with my leg, but I couldn't find the ground. I looked and looked and bobbed my head around trying to find some point of focus. I just couldn't. I'm happy to report that I made it off the curb, unlike Jillian, but not without looking like a drunk flamingo, bending my legs too far, reaching out slowly with my toe to find the ground, then setting my foot down softly, then letting the other leg and my body follow in this kind of slow motion twist with a measure of pelvic thrust thrown in for good measure. (laughs) A very kind older lady, I'd guess around 80 years old, came over to me and rested her hand ever so gently on my shoulder and said, First day with your new progressives, dear. I did a little reading with my new glasses. And it seems that this is one of those it-happens-to-everyone things. Our body changes because we're putting more and more miles on it, and parts just start to wear out. 
It's just a fact of getting older. This is my buddy Martin. He wears reading glasses, and we chatted a little bit about when he started wearing them. Kind of mid 40s. I was it. it I always when I when I talk about it, I always say it was like going off a cliff. I never wore. I, I've never worn glasses in my life, and uh, all of a sudden I needed reading glasses, and then like within months that seemed to to get worse and worse and worse. I started at like a one and now I don't even know what I am now. Do you actually have a prescription or do you use over the counter? I use over the counter ones and they, they work fine for me. And, and I, I think I even talked to a, uh, an ophthalmologist and he said that they would be fine. Um, and I kind of like reading glasses in a weird way. They're a bit of a pain, but I like the idea that you can buy cool ones. Beginning in our early to mid forties, we might start to have problems seeing at close distances, especially when reading and working on the computer. Initially, you might need to hold reading materials further away to see them clearly, or maybe you have to remove your glasses to see better up close. Print in the newspaper or on a restaurant menu might be a little blurry, especially if there isn't enough light. This normal change in the eye's focusing ability is called presbyopia. I'll let the experts at the American Academy of Ophthalmology explain this part. Presbyopia develops when our eye's natural lens loses its flexibility. Focusing up close becomes more difficult. The eye's ciliary muscle contracts, which causes our flexible lens to thicken or change shape. This change in shape allows us to see objects up close. As we age, our lens becomes less flexible and resists changing shape so our ability to see up close is diminished. Usually, the first sign of presbyopia is the need to hold a newspaper or other reading material at arm's length to be able to read them. You can't escape presbyopia, even if you've never had vision problems before. I didn't wear any kind of glasses until I was close to 40. It can't be prevented, and it can't be cured. But there are many things that we can do to maintain clear, comfortable vision. Eyeglasses, contact lenses, even laser surgery. As you continue to age, presbyopia becomes more advanced. You may notice that you need to change your eyeglass or contact lens prescription more frequently than you used to, but it seems that around age 60 these changes slow down or even stop. It's been estimated that more than a billion people in the world experience vision problems because of presbyopia. And according to the World Health Organization, 517 million of these, that's half of the people who have it, don't have adequate correction with eyeglasses. In developing countries, glasses are available in some urban areas, but in remote regions, they can't get them or they're too expensive. That's a serious drag if you think about it because good near vision is important for performing close-up work and for literacy. There are a number of agencies and some stores that partner with the World Health Organization and other charities in programs that help get eyeglasses to those who can't get them themselves. Ask your eye doctor or eyeglasses retailer for information if you want to help. By the way, the guy we have to thank for the first bifocals or multifocal lenses is Benjamin Franklin. Sometime around 1780, Franklin cut two lenses in half, one with distance correction and one with a correction for reading, and he glued them together. This early bifocal design with a line extending across the entire width of the lens, separating the distance and near corrections, was called the Franklin bifocal. The Franklin bifocal design remained in style for more than 100 years. And then in the early 1900s, the invention of fused bifocals offered thinner and more attractive lenses and eventually led to progressives. Go Ben! It seems like every time I start doing research for the podcast, no matter what the subject, I inevitably run into money. Like how much big corporations are making from me and all of us who are over 40. I'm not a financial whiz by any means, but if I had any money to invest, I think I'd throw it all into the optical industry. The population is aging. Most people over 45 experience some degree of presbyopia. We have longer lifespans. 96% of the North American population wears glasses. You do the math. Market research report after report says the U.S. and Canadian eyewear markets are bright. Incidentally, the demand for prescription eyewear among young consumers is expected to grow too. Prolonged use of smartphones and tablets 
will cause eye strain and increase the risk of future vision problems. By 2020, it is expected that global eyewear sales will reach $165 billion. So yay, we're going blurry. Our kids are gonna go blind and we can profit from it. If you're over 40 and things are seeming a bit fuzzy, don't be shy. Go get your eyes checked. Glasses are cool now, even a fashion accessory. And if you're like me, glasses are great exercise. Oh shoot, I left my glasses upstairs. Wait, I think my glasses are in the car. Honey, can you bring me my glasses? The music you heard in this episode was all by Texas Radio Fish, Woof Woof, copyright 2015, and Just One Look, copyright 2013. Both pieces are licensed under Creative Commons. My ideas and opinions are mine. I'm Smitty. Thanks for listening.